Hey everybody, Wayne here. This is our playthrough video um, of Combat Infantry West Front 1944 to 1945 by Columbia Games. Uh, as mentioned previously, if you watched the unboxing or you've watched, um, I can't remember it a little bit here. Let's get this thing. There we go. As you can see, a little bit more, a little better. Okay, cool. Um, this is a tactical game, um, block based, hex, hex board. Uh, has different uh, missions, different scenarios. Uh, and then depending on that scenario, you set up appropriately and you go ahead and run through. Um, I do have, like I said, I did an unboxing. So if you want to see just the like very basic what the game looks like coming out of the box, check that out. I also have a tutorial video um, that's gone up. Just so want to kind of see what all the numbers on these mean because I'm going to play through. I'm going to explain things, but I'm not going to you know cover it necessarily as in depth as I did maybe in the tutorial. So if you watch that one first, you go ahead and you can watch this one to get a real good idea how the game play. All right. So in this uh, playthrough here, we are playing the, the Hell's Beach um, scenario, which is the first scenario in the game. Each side is made up of one company, um, and then each company is divided up into three platoons, and then there are multiple um, battalion and company weapons um, spread out throughout, you know, everything from, say, American bazookas, American mortars, German mortars, German tiger tank, etc. So, excuse me a second, I am... Uh, Recovering from a cold, so if you hear me uh, sneeze a little bit or just kind of cough, I, I do apologize ahead of time. So, <clears throat> okay, all right. So let's dive in. Um, in this uh, scenario, you as the Americans are obviously assaulting on the beach. So I've already done setup. Um, I'm playing it solo, which I'm using the um, draw cup method. So I'm drawing the headquarters out of cups and then placing the headquarters near the appropriate units and then activating them. And you'll see how that works as I play. I've already done set up with the Germans in a strong defensive line up front. I'm going to try to stop the Americans more towards the front up on the beaches here. And the Americans here, their goal is to come in and I've placed um, red um, token here, red, red cubes, in the different victory point hexes. So the way that you win the game is each side gains victory points for eliminating enemy units. You also gain VPs for holding these hexes at the end of the game. So first off, um, the first hex over here would be the town of basile sur may which, apologies by the way, I'm sure I'll butcher the, these French names. Just apologizing ahead of time. American from the Midwest here. I love Missouri. All right, so basile sur may that's um, worth, what are we looking at here, worth two VPs. This, uh, like, forest here, Bois de Chen, it's worth uh, three and then each of the Halar here, or Halar, is each VP hex here is worth two. So as the allies, I mean, the Americans here, you got to make headway because you got to get up there. Unless you're going to just destroy all the German units, you got to move up the beaches. you got to capture, start capturing some of these. So it starts off, um, the Germans do deploy first, and then the uh, Americans deploy, but then the Germans get to play first, so they get the first turn. So what it is, is the game was broken up into a total of seven game turns, which I don't think you guys can see. Hang on. I'm going to take the uh, camera off the mountain here for a second, so it'll be a little shaky. Go ahead, and you can see over here, this is the scenario sheet. Um, you can see a list, you know, kind of describes the scenario for you, describes the makeup, says which map you use, um, how the companies, battalions, platoons are broken up, describes if you get artillery or air support, um, and recommend some solitary info at the bottom. You can see the game turns on the right, going up to seven game turns, etc. So we're starting off in the first one. The Germans get to go first. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and draw from the German headquarters cup to determine what headquarters they get to activate first, and then which units they get to activate. So I drew first platoon. So A company, which in this uh, scenario, it's only the one company each, so it's all A company. So, uh, first platoon. So I set it up just kind of for myself. Clearly you can set it up however you want. Just to make it a little kind of easier on myself, whatever. Um, I have the platoons lined up like first platoon, second, third. And both for Germans and Americans. Just to make it a little easier as I'm, as I'm drawing. I can I know right any general area where that platoon is. So first platoon for the Germans. You can see is up here. Um, this is these three. Oh, I should have put. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. No, I'm just thinking how I didn't uh, I didn't set it up uh, when I did my setup. I should have probably put a, put another a company or battalion weapon nearby so he could have um, con 
put them in command. But that's that's part of the game, right? That's the setup there. That's the Germans. They didn't think right. They didn't have their command and control set up. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to place the um, German platoon here. Excuse me, platoon headquarters um, in Basile, Basile sur May, um, which now he's allowed to activate his... Oops, and these are... Sorry, these were flipped over because I was... Uh, I was just doing my, um, let me double check here. There I'll start max strength. I was fooling around doing a, uh, my tutorial video, so. All right, perfect, back to full strength. Okay, all right, sorry about that. All right, so um, these German rifle squads, first platoon, can all activate because it's all within command range. For a platoon headquarters, any units in the com is, same hex or adjacent is in command range. So. What I want to do is we're going to have them fire down on them because clearly we're we want to get these American units, want to destroy them, right? Let's go ahead and let's activate this rifle squad here. He has his three strength and a firepower of three. He's going to fire down onto the beach. He's going to fire at this hex. He can't target any specific unit because he doesn't technically know. He can't see him. Like I said, he can't see him, but he does because they're not um, flipped face up. He's just not able to really separate them. That's okay. He's going to fire at that hex. So with his str three strength. Just roll 3d10 and go ahead and roll it. And he has a firepower of three. So one, two, or three are going to be hits. So no hits. Unfortunately, no hits. Um, when you hit a hex that has multiple units, you have to you damage the person who controls the hex. Um, damage is the highest strength one. If it's a tie, you get to choose which unit to damage. So, all right, now we're going to go ahead and activate this rifle squad. Three strength, firepower three. He's going to fire down on that beach right here, so in front of him. Okay, two hits. A nine does not hit, but the two and the one, obviously, are three or less. So he gets two hits. So now, as the allies, you want to look at your units and say, okay, so what do we got in this hex? Two hits on that hex. All right, two rifle squads. So if one of them goes to th flips to three, the other rotates to three. So they both took, each took a hit. All right, um, let's go ahead and this German squad here is going to dig in. So he's going to dig a foxhole. Um, so he's a special move, he digs a foxhole. Um, let me double check the rules on how that works. All right, so just like I thought, basically you just go ahead, um, he uses his action. It's uh, he's put this foxhole marker there, which will give him D2, defense 2 in that hex. So it would be the same thing as he was in like the shoot getting shot at in the forest or if he was in a town. So, and then he's face up on that foxhole. Or in the foxhole, I guess, right? All right, and that was, those are the three units for that um, headquarters. So what we do, uh, we drew him, we placed him. Um, he gets to do an action as well, which at this time he can't really do anything because you can't, um, he can't like move and shoot and he's not gonna engage in assault combat by himself or anything like that. So he's just gonna sit tight here. Um, so now we go ahead and move on. And what we do is that was one player turn. So remember, it's there's seven game turns, but each player turn is back and forth. Each each you get four player turns per game turn. So that was the German um, player turn. So now we go into the allies. We draw out of our cup here. Draw headquarters. All right. Actually, what do you know? First platoon as well. So it's actually in the same area down here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and place him. Let's go ahead and place. Oh shoot, we didn't place them here or there. Okay, we got it. Let's do them here. So the headquarters is gonna be right there. We're gonna go ahead and let's move some of these units up here. So what I'm thinking is, let's start off. I know what we'll do. Here we'll go. Okay, so let's go ahead and activate. So first platoon rifle squad right here. Let's go ahead and move him. He's gonna move up to here. Which movement? He has five movement. And we're crossing a slope hex side, which adds plus one MP, and he's going into a clear, which is two. So two plus one, three. So three movements. He has two movement points left. Um, I think he's going to stop there. Is he assault? Maybe he should assault. Well, actually, never mind. He has to stop there. My apologies. He entered. Uh, um, he's adjacent to the enemy unit, so he has to stop there. So my, my apologies. Um, so he stops, which he stops after just a movement. So you technically place him face down. He had fire, so they don't know exactly um, what he is, technically. Obviously, I know what he is, but, you know, according to the rules. So, well, let's go ahead and I think what we want to do is I see we have our other two rifle squads here. And then we also have a mortar here. I think I want this mortar to shoot. I want this mortar to shoot this hex. Now, 
there's a risk of friendly fire um, when you use a bombard unit, but we're going to risk it. Um, if that comes up, which is that's if you roll a 10, we'll deal with it when it comes. But let's just take the risk. So this headquarters, uh, Splatoon headquarters, what he's going to do is he's going to be activating. He activated one rifle squad. He has his two more here. And then for his one company or battalion unit, he's going to activate this mortar right here. This mortar has a three strength, a firepower of four, a range of four, actually a range of five. So you can easily hit that hex two hexes away. And he has um, line of sight from thanks to this platoon. And actually, because this platoon headquarters is adjacent, he gets a plus one to his firepower for the bombardment. So even though according to the um, he, uh, unit here, he's firepower four, he actually has a firepower of five in this particular bombardment. So three strength, so three dice, and a firepower of modified firepower of five. So five or less, are all hits. A nine, a six, and a one. Okay, it's only one hit, but hey, one hit still counts. So this German unit um, rotates from a three to one strength. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's see here. Let's do one fire combat. Let's do one rifle squad's going to fire. And run, one rifle squad's going to assault that hex. So the one rifle squad firing um, has a three strength, firepower of three. And because he's adjacent, he can see him. So fire okay, three, three strength, firepower of, what did I say, three? Boom, there's a two. That's another hit. So this German unit, German rifle squad is down to one. All right, now we do the assault combat. The assault combat comes after fire combat. So this American rifle squad charging up the hill. Um, so go ahead and do assault combat. Now we go ahead, you start off, it's three assault combats, three rounds. First round, the defender um, goes first. However, he did, because he's at one strength, he has to make, he has to pass his morale. Um, he does have a headquarters within range, so this headquarters morale is six, so he's going to have to use that um, higher number, that advantageous number. So if you roll 1d10, six or less, you got a three, so he passes his morale check, which means he gets to act. Now he's going to obviously shoot back at this point. Or should I have him retreat? No, he can't retreat. Sorry, defender can't retreat first round. So he has to, he's just going to fire back. So one strength, fire power three, five, so no, no hits. Now the American gets to attack, three strength, fire power three. Boom, three, two, four. So two hits. Obviously, that just go ahead and eliminates the German unit. So remember, that will count for one uh, victory point as well in the game here. So I go ahead and I just set him off to the side. I set him on the ally. I say the allied's down here. Um, and then that uh, American unit here gets to go ahead and take over that hex and gets to plop down in that hex. Um, now this uh, platoon... Again, same thing as with the Germans. The platoon uh, headquarters can activate. He can do what he wants to with himself. He's not going to do anything. I think he's just going to he's just going to chill out here because uh, he doesn't want to. Oops, down there. Um, doesn't want to do anything. Doesn't want to get in uh, get damaged or anything like that. So, all right. So now that was the German, or excuse me, that was the Allies. So we go back to the Germans. Their second second player turn. Draw again. All right. So now we're looking at second platoon. Hey, working nicely. It's marching right across the board over here. So second platoon is over here. As you can see, we have second platoon rifle squad here, a Panzer Shrek. There's that Tiger tank. Second platoon rifle squad, machine gun. Second platoon rifle squad. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do here. So we'll go ahead and let's place him here, activating rifle squad, rifle squad, rifle squad. And then for our special unit, let's go ahead and activate our excuse me, our company or battalion. Let's go ahead and activate this adjacent machine gun to shoot down in that hex. I think that'll cause some nice damage there. So, all right, so let's go ahead and do, let's do the machine gun first. I think we do all fire combat, it looks like here. Let's go ahead and do our machine guns fire combat. So that's a three, three strength, firepower of five. So just roll three dice and a five or less or hit. Starting at that hex here. One, six, and eight. Unfortunately, only one hit. Unfortunately for the Germans, anyway. Only one hit. Um, allies look. American unit looks. See, four, four, two. Go ahead and just rotate down one of these uh, rifle squads here. All right. Now, this other rifle squad wants to fire as well. I don't know if he can. Let's check um, our... Uh, remember, our train to start our hex side, so you can only do so many fire combats. Let's see. Shooting down a slope, down onto the beach. Slope for fire combat is other terrain. Um, slope effects are other terrain for downhill as well. So then downhill onto the beach is two. So two units get to fire down onto down from across this hex side. So luckily he do he does get two. 
So he's going to fire as well. Strength of three, firepower of three. So roll three dice. Three or less is hit. A two and a one. So that's two hits. Oh, there we go. Two hits. So go ahead and rotate this American unit to a three. And then three, three, two. Let's go ahead and rotate this one down to a two. Oh, it's causing some damage. These Germans are messing up these Americans on the beach. That's why the Americans are trying to push out the beach because when they're up here and they're up on these slopes and they're shooting down machine guns, rifles, like they're, they're causing some damage. All right. Let's go ahead and let's see. Okay. So this rifle squad here is going to shoot. He's going to shoot. I don't think he can line of sight to that hex because it's centered hex, centered to hex. It'd be along that slope there. Eh. Why risk it anyway? Let's go ahead and just shoot in this hex here. So he's going to shoot this way. He has a range of two. So one, two. So it will work. Um, three strength, firepower of three. Like I said, he's shooting down here. So one, two hexes away. Zero, four, and nine. So none of them are hits. Nothing. Too far away. Didn't cause any damage. Bullets fly overhead. And then we'll go ahead and do this. Rifle squad right here is also going to fire. He's going to fire straight south here. One, two hexes away. Within range. Three strength. Firepower three. Shoot at that hex there. A three. So it's one hit. It's a seven and a six. So only one hit. But allies here. Boom. So those are ready. So in this one player turn, the Germans got four hits in this hex. And so they knock these rifle squads down, both of them down from four to two. That's that's pretty brutal. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit him. And that was it for that platoon headquarters. So that's that player turn. That second German player turn is done. So now we go back to the Americans. See so what we can draw out of here. All right. And second platoon, I swear I'm not, I swear I'm not cheating. I'm just drawing them. Okay. That's cool. All right, so second platoon headquarters. Let's see. Well, he's obviously going to be with his second platoon here. Go ahead and place him here. I'm seeking out in command ranges here. So we have our two rifle squads here. Then there is a Sherman. And then there is another rifle squad, a machine gun. And then what is the other one? A Greyhound. Okay. Well, I think at this point, I think we'll probably want to get that Sherman activated and try to cause some damage maybe. Um. Oh, what should we do? What should we do? I kind of want to get some of these. Yeah, we're going to move up the beach. We also want to get these units off us. What do we do? What do we do? Okay. I have an idea here. So we're activating these units here. Let's go ahead and have... I'm firing up the slope up to clear. So it does get to do... Um, two of them are firing. So let's go ahead and have the Sherman fire first. The so Sherman's a pretty powerful unit. Two strength, so he doesn't want to roll two dice right now, but he's got a firepower of six. He's going to fire up into this hex here, and because they fired their face um, face up, we can target. So what we're going to do is we're going to target that machine gun. So we want to take that machine gun out. So a firepower six, rolling two dice, so six or lesses are hits. Four and a seven, one hit. Hey, I'll take it. So on that machine gun, the Sherman started whooping him a little bit. And now let's go ahead and do the same thing with... One of this other rifle squad here. Two strength, firepower two only. Unfortunately, he's going to target the machine gun. So two strength, firepower two. So let's roll a one or two, so that's not so good there. Okay, eight and five, so two misses, unfortunately. And then this rifle squad here. Uh, assaulting would be a terrible idea. He's going to try to rally with a against the morale of six of the platoon headquarters. So we're going to be ten. Six, he got exactly a six. That, that's enough. So he rallies from a two to three strength. Let me go ahead and place them face down. And they're all that same hex here. So let's make sure they're all in the same hex. Now we get rotated. Good. All right. Now we have this hex here. It has our one rifle squad. And now unfortunately, there's also a um, Greyhound and then a machine gun. We can't activate either of those with this platoon headquarters. Remember, because he can only activate a platoon headquarters, can only activate one company or battalion weapon. And here they activated that Sherman. So he's just going to chill. These other two will chill. So it's just this rifle squad. However, the rifle squad is, um, does have four strength. So he's pretty tough. So let's go ahead and have that rifle squad. Oh, should he, what, should he assault or should he just shoot? I don't know. It's pretty tough to say. I think we kind of move, want to move up the beach, don't we? Should we try assaulting? You know what? Let's go ahead and assault. So he's going to go ahead and move up. So he's going to move up into the same hex. Remember, it's five movement. It's going to be up a slope into clear. So that's three. So he has plenty of movement points to make that move. Now we go ahead and do our assault combat here. 
Um, defender shoot first, three rounds. You know the drill by now, right? Okay, so defender with his three, three strength and a firepower three. So he's got one hit, unfortunately. All right, so now the attacker gets to go with his strength of three now. Got reduced by one, so one hit. Firepower of two only, so only ones and twos. Oh, one and a two, two hits, nice, okay. So boom, boom. So that German rifle squad took a little beating there. All right, so second round of combat. Um, before we, defender has to check his morale because he's on to one strength. Roll a 1d6 against uh, Jason Morales, six, seven, he failed. So he's disrupted. So the German unit does nothing this turn. He just sits there. There's the allies chance to knock him out. So roll three for three strength, firepower two. Oh, nine, nine, and seven, no hits. All right, third round of combat. The German unit's going to try to pass his morale again. He gets a 10, so he fails, so he's disrupted. Or unfortunately, third round of combat, the attacker has to retreat. So he's going to retreat back down into this hex here. Almost took him out, but almost only counts with horseshoes and hand grenades. All right. Oh, uh, I think that was it, right? Yep, that was it for the uh, American second um, command here. Um, I'm going to rotate this camera down a little bit, or is it fine? Let's try that. I don't want to disrupt the game here too much. I'm just trying to get it to be... Yeah, it can, don't really matter. You can see regardless, right? Okay. All right, so that was the American second um, player turn. So we go ahead and draw for the Germans. What do we got here? So at this point, we know it's either going to be the third platoon or it's going to be the company headquarters. So what do we got? And we ended up with third <laughs> third platoon headquarters, so it's company's going to be safe for last. All right, so third platoon headquarters. Third platoon is over here. Uh, you guys can see it just fine. Let's go ahead and place him here. Um, we're going to place him in the same hex. It's clean to Harl up on, it looks like a little bit of a hill with the sniper. Um, I don't think the sniper is going to be able to shoot, unfortunately. Just from that angle, the sniper is going to have to wait till, because if you look at it, so line of sight, um, you have to take into account slopes. So the sniper is shooting down here, although he is above them, so he can shoot over his allies because he's above them. Actually, I don't think he's above them anyway. I think he's on the same slope as them. Yeah, so he can't, he can't shoot, you can't shoot through your, you shoot through your fence? Let me double check the rules here, folks. All right, I double checked. Yeah, he cannot fire through enemy units anyway. So he wouldn't be able to fire no matter what. Um, that's all right. He's he's kind of in waiting, waiting for the Americans to come off the beaches so he can start shooting at him. All right, but the third platoon here, uh, headquarters, will activate his other rifle squads here. And they're all going to rain fire down on... Uh, down on the Americans here on the beach. That's for sure. So let's go ahead and start off over here on the right with his three strength. Um, firepower two. He's going to shoot down into this hex here on the beach. Three. So ones and twos are hits. He got one, two, so that's a hit. What do we got here? Okay, so let's go ahead and reduce. Rotate one of these. All right. Now he's going to fire down into that hex as well. Three strength. Firepower two. One hit. Go ahead and, yeah, definitely we're going to reduce, yeah, reduce the rifle squad. And him too down here. So I'm getting, these Germans are just causing some damage here. So three strength, firepower two. One or twos. One other hit. All right. Oh, now it's a, oh, that's a tough one too. So here's the deal on this one is, um, I'm going to double check the rules here. But as you can see, so he's, he, they both have a two strength. So we got a hit. They both have a two strength. Problem is, the steward here is an armored vehicle with a two armor class, which would mean that the firepower would be reduced by two, which you can't have a zero armor, zero firepower, so he'd have no effect against him. But I don't mean if, but let me double check to see if that automatically hits him then. Let me check the rules. Okay, I double checked. In this case, it won't apply actually because um, armor class only applies when a unit is face up and it's targeted. So because he's just part of a hex, I mean, he's not face up. Yes, he's standing up, but face up would be like this. Oh, well, it's him, so it'd be like this. Face down, basically waiting, then face up. Because he's not face up, he's just chilling like this. Uh, it doesn't matter. So as the um, ally, you get to choose, which I would rather... Hi, Bazooka, that was pretty good, though. <laughs> it's kind of tough to choose right now. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say the Bazooka is going to take the hit instead of the steward anyway. So, All right, there we go. So that was the German third platoon. That was our third player turn. So now we go on to the American third player turn. Turn. Um, oh, company. Here we go. So instead of doing the... So it definitely only had the third platoon or the company headquarters. We have the company headquarters. 
Um, if you remember from the tutorial, if you watch that, company headquarters can activate any three units as long as they haven't been activated yet. Any three units on a board as long as they haven't been activated yet. So, looking around here, you can kind of see um, ones that are face up or face down have already been activated. So, for the Americans, you know, all these over here came ready to be activated. Now, 3rd Platoon is going to be able to activate all their rifle squads and one additional, but there's still going to be extra units to be activated. Um... We also have, looks like over here we have a Stuart here can be activated, as well as our, oh, we don't have any off-map stuff yet, not for the Allies. The Germans have one artillery, but Americans have anything yet. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead. So with our, and yeah, they were on the map, so I just usually go ahead and put him kind of out of the way, so he's not going to get, you know, try not to get hurt anyway. Mm, where should I put him? What do we got over here anyway? We got our bazooka, our Stuart. Engineer, the tank. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, I got an idea. So let's go ahead and place him right here. In this hex here, he's gonna activate bazooka and the Stuart. Let's go ahead and do. Let's go ahead and do fire combat. Let's do the Stuart and the bazooka and a fire up, fire that way up there. So let's go ahead and start off with the Stuart. He has two strength, firepower four. He's gonna shoot uh, this German unit here. So four or less, two hits. So he's down to one. And this bazooka is gonna go ahead and fire. He's only got one strength, but he's a firepower five. So five or less. Oh, it's a nine. Nothing happens. Dang. All right. So that was two of his units. He gets to activate. He gets to activate one more somewhere else on the board. Mm, what should he activate? Should you fire him? Yeah, let's do that. So you can see we have this anti-tank gun. He's going to fire. Maybe it's overkill. I don't know. But he's going to fire up into this hex as well. He wants to try to eliminate that unit there. So two strength, firepower five. He's got a one. So that's a hit. So he's destroyed. Very nice. All right. Not too bad there, huh? That was the company headquarters. Uh, with the company headquarters, so in other turns, you may want to do things like, hey, activate um, off-map artillery, off-map airstrikes. So they're the only ones who can activate them. Um, platoon headquarters cannot activate the off-map um, units. All right, so that was the Allies' third. So now we go to the German fourth and final player turn. So they only have the one headquarters left, which for them is their, um, excuse me, their company headquarters. So for their company headquarters, again, remember we're talking about activating different units. Um, one thing is that when you look around, they can only you can only activate. Um, what I'm trying to say, you can only activate one bombardment unit. So for instance, per headquarters. So for instance, although if you look on the map right now, you can I have first of all I have an off map artillery, which is a bombardment unit. I also have a mortar here, and I have a mortar here for the Germans. Well, I can't activate all three of these. Because those are all bombardment units. I can only activate one of them. That's kind of the limits you a little bit on what you can do. Makes you have to have maybe some of the bombardment units a little closer so they can be activated. Um, which when I did my setup, clearly I kind of messed up a little bit on that. But hey, that's again, that's part of the game, right? And I even played this a couple times. <laughs> I've even played it already and already messed up on that. But hey, that happens. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is... I have an, Oh, I think I have a good idea. Should I do it? Should I do that? Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and do, um, let's go ahead and, um, we're going to place him here. I'm going to place the company headquarters up here in this hex. What we're going to do is we're going to activate, first off, we're going to activate this bunker. This bunker is going to kick some butt. I'll tell you that right now. I already know how the bunkers are. They're pretty tough. This bunker has a three strength and a firepower seven. I'm going to have him shoot down. Now he's way up there. Um on the slopes he's way up above everybody else he's going to shoot that into this hex right here in fact let's shoot that now well, shoot the Stuart. um let's try to shoot the bazoo well, oh shoot what should we do here with him so he can do some whooping let's shoot at the steward here so he's an armor class of two which his firepower is seven so it reduces it to five so it's still a firepower of five it's still pretty tough so he has strength of three, firepower of five. He's gonna shooting at that steward specifically. So that's it. Two, seven, and eight. All right, so he gets one hit. That's all right. That's not too bad. So I'm going to do more damage with them, but hey, we'll take it. That's one hit. Yeah, that was one that he's going to activate. And now he's going to go ahead and activate um, his the off-map artillery, which I have it right here. Um, so this is the German 105. 
Um, it starts off in this game. He only has one. You only have one. So it's obviously like like in three strength, two strength, one strength. He only has. It's not only instead of strength. I guess I'll explain it here. Um, see the number up top. That's how strength and then the firepower as usual. So this is the uses instead of being the strength of three, strength of two. That's how many uses you can use. You can do it. He only starts. You only start off with once. You can only do it once in the whole game. We're gonna use it now. But he has a three F six. So three strength, a firepower six. We can definitely cause some damage if we get lucky here. So we're going to use our one at company headquarters, and he's going to choose this hex to target. And you can't, uh, I don't think you can target a specific unit. Uh, maybe you can with your artillery. But regardless, he's just basically going to shoot at the whole hex and try to just damage everybody, damage as many people as he can. So it's three F6. You roll three dice, firepower of six or less, all hits. So one, two, three. So you got a one, a two, and a four. All hits. All freaking hits. So he annihilates everybody here, actually. So this bazooka is destroyed. Because Bazooka has only had one strength left. The steward takes a hit. He's destroyed. And then the com company headquarters is destroyed as well. Now, what you do in this game when you have um, a company headquarters is destroyed. I just want to make sure. I, I, I think I already know how it works. But I just want to double check in the book here. Um, you destroy a company headquarters to kind of keep it back in the game. What you have to do is you have to put him next to another unit of the company. And you have to take one... Um, one step away from them. So, for instance, headquarters elimination here. So, they're only one step unit. If they're eliminated, they immediately they return to play immediately, representing a battle for promotion. Um, eliminated um, company HQ returns to a friendly hex in or adjacent to one of its own PHQs, subject to stacking. Any one squad of that platoon is then reduced by one step. So, what that means is that so eliminating him doesn't like eliminate this headquarters technically. What it does is now I go ahead and I find, let's see, another platoon. So let's just say I'm going to put him next to this. I'm going to put him in this hex here with the uh, headquarters. Excuse me. So first platoon headquarters. I'm going to put him in that hex. And then this rifle squad that has three steps, we're going to reduce to two. So reducing him one step to signify the fact that there was a battlefield promotion um, to replace that lost headquarters that was obliterated by the German artillery. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just how that works. So. All right, now we just have the one player turn left because that was the fourth and final player turn for the Germans, the Americans. Now get their third, um, excuse me, third platoon here. Gets to activate. Let's see, third platoon. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, put them in that hex right there. Go ahead and activate all these guys here. We have our rifle squad, a rifle squad, another rifle squad, and then there's an engineer. He's going to activate. I wonder what he's going to do because engineers, aha, so engineers are a special unit. Um, when they engage in, into assault combat, they're, you double their firepower. So from a uh, range, you can only you know two strength, firepower two. It'll be two strength, firepower four. Let's go ahead and do... But first, though, instead of having him assault right away, let's go ahead and shoot. So we're going to have this activate the uh, rifle squad here. Strength of three, firepower two. He's going to shoot up into this hex here. What did I say? Firepower three? Yep. Let's see the five power, uh, strength of three. Oh, five, seven, and eight. That's no hits. None hits. Bang. All right. Um, let's go ahead and have this rifle squad here with four. Shoot up there as well. So he has four strength and a firepower two. So it's one hit. So I'm introduce my one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assault with, actually, we're going to assault from here with this. And we're going to assault with him. So it's going to be, we're going to be whooping on this guy, trying to get him out of there. All right, so first round of assault combat. And again, I kind of skipped over the movement, but that's because it's only one hex away. The movement will be three each time. So five movement points, five movement points, no problem moving up into that hex and assaulting. So defender fires first. Defender is going to go ahead and shoot. He knows that that uh, engineer is going to be the hardest. We're so going to shoot the engineer with his two strength and firepower of two. Uh, three and a ten, that's misses. Let's go ahead and do the engineer first. Strength of two. So he rolls two dice. Base of firepower is doubled. So his two becomes a four. So one to fours are hits. He got a four and a six. So one hit. So German's now reduced to one. And now the rifle squad. Three strength. Firepower two. And I got a one. One, eight, and nine. So the one is a hit. So he eliminates him. And we're going to go ahead and his engineer and this rifle squad. And go ahead and move up. And are going to secure that farm hex. Uh oh, just realized that for the firing part, um, 
I think he was in a farm hacks. Farm hacks would have had. Does it have two for defense? Well, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Oh shoot! But it's only D one for assaults, so they still killed them anyway. I'm just gonna say kill them. I might have cheated there a little bit. That's okay. It happens, right? Hey, can't get all the rules perfect. <laughs> all right, now was that it? That was it. All right, so that was game turn one. Um, so what we do here is going into game turn two. I'm not going to play the whole thing out, but I want to show you guys. So what we do is I'm going to take the camera off the uh, mount here. So, you can, whoop. so we go ahead and we move the uh, turn marker up to two. So now the allies, they get their artillery with two uses. Their artillery is 3F7, so very powerful artillery, two uses. So we go ahead and I like to put them over there. And now, because the, we're going on to game turn number two, we go ahead and return the headquarters. So, allies, one, two, three, four. And the Germans, where are all their headquarters? One, two, three, four. shake them up and all that so as you can see after just the first game turn we've already caused a lot of losses we've caused a lot of damage um clearly the um, allies have not captured any points yet but um so right now we have they've eliminated three german units three german rifle squads um the germans have eliminated allies an armored vehicle stewart and then a bazooka unit um the Allies are making a strong push here. You can see the Americans were making a strong push over here on the left part of the map up to uh, Basile sur May. Basile sur May. Again, so apologies for that. Um, we're moving up to capture that one. Looking pretty good over there. Germans are holding strong in the middle. And then on the right side, too, it actually looks like the Allies might be causing some damage and might be able to push up that way, too. Now, keep in mind, the Germans have some, some depth here. They do have some reserves. The Americans, I mean, this is it. This is the units they got. There's no reinforcements coming later in the later in the game or anything like that. Germans here, I mean, we got some units up here. We got a Tiger tank sitting up here. We got a couple mortars that haven't gotten a fire. And trust me, those mortars, with their three strength, firepower five, they're going to cause some damage. So... Hopefully this playthrough of that first turn really showed you guys how the game works. Um, I was, you know, I wanted to try to mix in a little bit of movement around, fire combat, assault combat, get some bombardments in there. Hopefully you guys really got to see how the game works. I really enjoy this game. This is possibly my favorite tactical, um, definitely World War II tactical combat game I've played. You know, and I've played, I haven't played all of them by any means. i played Band of Brothers. i played um, um, the Heroes, the... Heroes of Normandy, the what is it, Lock and Load, Lock and Load Publishing's version, all all fun games. They're all they're all good. None of them are bad, but this one is just a lot of fun. I love the tactile feel, manipulating the blocks, you know, rotating them, reducing the steps, uh, moving the blocks, flipping them around. It's just a lot of fun. It brings a little extra bit to the game besides just uh, moving little counters around. Um, there's anything wrong with that. I love doing that, but and solo plays really well. Just you know, as even as a block game, it does not suffer. Solo plays very well. Um, because of the fact you're able to draw the headquarters and then just pick, you know, oh, which headquarters do I activate? Oh, second platoon. I didn't, oh, there we go. And then you got to go ahead and you got to do that. And you got to figure out what strategy you can do from there. No matter if you want to do something else first. That's the headquarters you draw. That's what you got to play. And that's what makes solo play really well. That's what makes this game, um, really for anybody, I think, a lot of fun. So I give it a big thumbs up. Definitely recommend this one. If you have any questions, any comments, please post below. Um, check out if you, you know check out my other videos if you want um, but I hope you enjoyed this one hope you learned something about the game and I hope you got excited for it and I mentioned this on my other video but um, in 2019 I know there is a Kickstarter